takes me back to the tiniest room I've ever seen with a gaping hole busted into it. A mirror on a stick that was duct taped together. His setup table was duct taped. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we have you guys out there, my subscribers, God I love ya. You have sent me your piercing horror stories and today I'm going to be sharing them with the world. So I hope you enjoy that. I had to stop what I was doing to tell you these stories. Yes, I have two of them. First, when I was 15, I wanted my nose pierced so bad. My dad had finally agreed and took me to a tattoo shop to get it done. Everything was going well. He put on the dot, asked if it was okay, and got my dad's opinion. I sat down on the bed thing, and he put the clamps on. Before he started, my dad and him were talking about stupid shit. He goes in with the needle, shoves it halfway through, looks over at my dad, and asks him about his car. While the needle was halfway through my nostril, I said that it was hurting, and he pushed it the rest of the way real quick, and it was done. So painful. How is this a thing? Like, you need to be very good at multitasking to be a piercer because there's so many parts to it that you have to do all at once, let alone, like, you have to chat to your clients as well. I mean, have to, I make it sound like it's a chore, but, like, you should be talking to your clients so you can't just, like, stop things to do it. I've definitely seen piercers do it, which it's, like, you probably are in the wrong field. It's pretty easy to talk and continue what you're doing. It just becomes second nature when you've done enough piercings. Second, this is a few years after and I wanted my tongue pierced. My boyfriend and I went together. His went smooth and quick. Next was my turn. I sat down, got my tongue all dry and he started. He put the needle through the top halfway. <laughs> then he took the needle out and went up through the goddamn bottom. It was the worst pain I've ever felt and I knew something was wrong. Fast forward to later that night, I'm in so much pain and my tongue is so swollen that I couldn't eat or talk. It was easily the size of my fist. Jesus. I kept telling my boyfriend something was wrong, but he said his was feeling the same to not worry too much. I couldn't take it anymore, so I went to the bathroom and looked at it. It was literally sideways. One hole was on the far left of the top of my tongue and the bottom was on the far right. I had to use pliers to take it out. I got my tongue re-pierced a few years later and the dude said it was one of the worst scars on a tongue from a f***ed up piercing he'd ever seen. <sighs> my God. There's like so many things that went wrong. Like the fact that they went through the top then switched to go through the bottom. Basically, if your needle has touched anything, like if you, if you f***ed up essentially, say if you've gone to push it through and it hasn't gone all the way through it, like I don't really understand how these things happen, but like say if you were to do that, you were then to fetch a new needle. You don't reuse that needle. Like he's just used the same needle, went, oh, no, oh, yep, uh, no, 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 no. That's like piercing 101. And you may think it doesn't sound like you're reusing a needle, but you are reusing a needle. Like as soon as it's touched something, that needle has been used and you need to use another one. Also, they're not that expensive that you should even be concerned with getting a new needle just as you shouldn't be concerned with the amount of glove changes you need to do as well. This is when you know places are doing things dodgy and they're doing things like to try and save money or whatever. I, I just don't know why you would do that. And just now scarred your tongue, great. Just what we need. I've had a few dodgy piercings when I was a teenager, but nothing on this level. The worst was probably when I was around 15 and got my side lip pierced and the guy put a ring in as I thought it would look great. There's your first red flaggy boy. Never ever get pierced with a ring, especially in your damn lip. Like lips swell like no other and putting a ring in that is bound to be chaos. The ring was tiny and I didn't know better and I was on holiday going home the next day. Over the next few days, it began to swell to the point it was beginning to cut through my lip. My God, I'm not surprised. So I went to a piercer near me and she changed it out for a long bar, but it hurt so much. I rang the piercer to explain the situation and he hurled abuse at me down the phone. Moral of the story, do your research before getting a piercing and research the studio. If I had done that, then I could have challenged him on the day or better still avoided his studio. Or better still. I feel like you've told the tale of many, many people out there who have had to go through this exact scenario. So thank you for telling your story. You know, you didn't know any better and you've gone to this place 
but the fact that when you are challenging the piercer who's done it, asking them even like, what is going wrong? What am I supposed to do? And they're hurling abuse at you. I can't stand it when people can't take constructive criticism. Like, admit you f***ed up and do something about it. Like, offer the person a refund, offer the person to change the jewellery, but the fact that they've pierced it with a ring, like, kind of shows that, like, this sort of place is the kind of place that would be like, they've got your money, that's all that matters. There's no trying to help you from here. They've, they've got what they need. But also, there's a thing, there's such a thing as bad publicity, and I don't know how people haven't learnt that, especially in this day and age with social media. I went to a so-called professional salon to get my industrial done in November. The girl was very sweet. She made sure I was comfortable and liked the placement and all that. But then she started piercing my ears and she got through the first hole, but she struggled with the second for what seemed like five minutes or so. After she finally got the needle through, she needed to pull the jewelry in too. She struggled with both holes and it was one of the worst pains I have ever felt. Then it got infected and I had to call my doctor. He gave me some medicine and disinfectant stuff to clean my ears with and it healed in a few weeks. I still don't know what I should have done better since I went to a professional. It's certainly confusing when stuff like that happens because like you think if you think you've gone to someone who's a professional you would expect them to know what they're doing and not be fumbling around for five minutes. Like the longest amount of time for an industrial piercing should be the placement. That is the time consuming part of an industrial piercing. And it really doesn't help when the person who's piercing you is just like doing something for so long and it would have been so painful and they're not explaining anything to you. Like you have no idea what's happening. You're not a piercer. You don't know how a piercing is performed. If I was in that situation and I didn't know, I would be freaking out probably. And I would be in a lot of pain thinking like, when is this going to end? A piercing is meant to be quick. Like that's the beauty of it. It's not something like a tattoo that's going to take time. It's meant to be over very quickly. Lady Creek, before I was a piercer myself, I was a young teenager, probably like 14 or 15. I went to a shop in my hometown going for a navel piercing. Well, Whilst putting the needle through, he goes, oops. I said, oops. And he goes, hold on. And what he had done was he missed the dot and said, oops. Pulled it out partially and re-pierced me the rest of the way again with the same needle to fix his mistake. <sighs> Beside the barbell, I had a bleeding puncture, small but noticeable, next to the ball. Oops, my ass. The jerk was lucky it healed nicely and was straight after he stabbed me an additional time. Also, the place that did my industrial used one needle, hurt like a son of a bitch, but again healed great. I'm 30 and had it since I was 13. No migration and wonderful placement. My ear was good for it anyway. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so crazy that this stuff happens so often, like the reusing of the needle. This happened twice within a matter of a few years to Lilith, like, Oh my God, literally pushing a needle partially in and then taking it out and re-piercing. Like I said before, like it's just not what you do that is reusing a needle in the industrial piercing scenario. I'm actually surprised like how much more I'm seeing it through watching TikTok videos and that sort of thing. Before I started reacting to things and looking at more videos, I didn't know people actually would do that. Like I just... Like it blows my mind that much that someone would do that, that I just didn't think it existed. I just thought everyone knew that you don't reuse the same needle for two separate piercings. Like, again, even though it's one piercing in industrial, like it's one, it's going through two separate areas. You don't pierce with the same needle. Like it's yucky, 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 yucky. I was a guinea pig with a nose piercing for somebody that was learning how to do piercings. The guy that was teaching her had to take over real quick because she didn't push it fast enough. That sort of sounds like someone who's like really hesitant to actually do the piercing. Maybe it was this person's first piercing. Hopefully you knew that you were getting pierced by someone who was training and learning because you should be told that and you should be well aware of that. However, the actual piercing part when you're learning shouldn't be the part that's taking ages. She couldn't push it through basically is what it sounds like. If you can't do that, you probably can't be a piercer because like that's your first step is that you need to get that needle through and it needs to go through straight away. Even if you've done it wrong, which can happen at the beginning, can you push the needle through is the question. Me and my mum went to get our noses pierced over 15 years ago at a local tattoo shop. And while the guy was piercing my nose, someone came into the shop and he left the needle in my nose and went to the front to deal with that. And I sat there in the back room for what felt like an eternity with a needle through my nose. 
How bloody unprofessional. The whole practice of the tattoo shop in that setting is wrong. A piercing needs to be done in one go. You definitely can have tattoo artists pause what they're doing before going to serve people or talk to people at the front counter and then they can come back to you. If you're halfway through a piercing, you finish that piercing because that's just putting that person through more pain than it needs to be, especially when it's a piercing. Like I said before, a piercing is meant to be quick. It's not meant to be like a tattoo where you sit there for hours on end. It's seconds. It should be. So my industrial. One mistake. The shop I went to was because it was the cheapest, but I had been pierced and tattooed there before. I think they were cheaper partially because they were in a smaller town than the city. I had this vague memory of a girl I had gone to high school with getting an industrial piercing done when we were in high school and it had gotten up and I asked my other friend about it, but no response. So I went in to get it done and he pierced it at a 16 gauge. And when I came to have the jewelry change, he put in 14 gauge jewelry. Secondly, the jewelry he put in was two captive bead rings. I should have left because I had wanted the barbell, but it did make sense that two separate pieces of jewelry would heal better than one. But other than that, it was clean and fine. No, 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 no. Weird that it was pierced with 16 gauge. And then when changing the jewelry changed to 14 gauge. The first jewelry that should have gone in should have been 14 gauge jewelry, but putting in captive bead rings, <sighs> like putting in two separate pieces of jewelry is going to cause it to heal weird because by the sound of it, it's not healed. Why would he not just put a barbell in? Then as soon as I leave, I get a text from my friend saying, yeah, don't go there. They up that one girl's it didn't line up when she went to change the jewelry that's exactly what will happen because they will heal at different angles i got my nose pierced when i was a teenager and the piercer clamped the forceps on my nostril and then left them hanging there while he i don't know finished prepping it was the most painful piercing i've ever gotten and i've had my tongue industrial and tragus done at the same shop with no pain not to mention the half a do dozen self piercings i've done like don't tell me that if piercers put a clamp on you and just leave it it's going to hurt especially if it's like properly clamped down there's like these little sections you click in to tighten any tool that you're using and really you shouldn't have to use them just your strength with your hands should be able to hold them enough so having that clipped on you will hurt because they go so tight and they're so strong so yeah that would bloody hurt and why would you just leave them and walk away people not having prepped beforehand you're in a rush you're not doing things accurately because you're rushing if you've got to do that and then walk away like it should all be done at once does this make sense long read worth it if you like piercing horror stories though trust me it is worth sitting through this long story it is intense when i was 16 my mum had promised me she'd take me to get a piercing for my birthday keep in mind my birthday is new year's eve so shops were likely to be booked or closing early anyway i wanted a tongue piercing but both parents said no because i had braces well being 16 i was determined to have an oral piercing no matter what so I decided on a vertical librette and a nostril piercing. I'd been waiting on my mom to pick me up from my dad's house since six and she was mad late. And instead is picking me up at 1am the night of New Year's Eve, demanding I call around anywhere so I could still get my piercing. So fast forward through a lot of driving and arguing at 3am and I find a really sketchy place in downtown Atlanta. Guy answers, says he'll stay open for us to come in as long as we can make it in five minutes. <gasps> um what piercing places are open at 3 a.m maybe it's more of like an america thing that like there are open late piercing shops but we definitely don't have them here and it has a lot to do with like the health and safety factor of it the fact that so many drunk people would come in during that time you should never be piercing like intoxicated people like it's just bound to end badly we went walking into a hot box tattoo parlor with paint peeling off the walls and holes in the seats and holes in the walls every immediate red flag you could possibly get man walks up to us asks what piercing i want to get i tell him he has me sit down and wait for another hour even though they were literally closed no one was up front. They were probably just hoping we'd leave. But he finally comes back, takes me back to the tiniest room I've ever seen with a gaping hole busted into it. A mirror on a stick that was duct taped together. His setup table was duct taped.
What? <laughs> he was just duct taping everything. He's like a little, really crafty man. His whole house is just made out of cardboard and duct tape. Like he's just into duct tape. And that's what he was actually doing. He was just creating all this stuff in the back. Cause he's like, I've never actually done a piercing before. So I better like make it look legit with this duct tape. And the chair I was sitting on had a giant hole where the foam had just been picked at endlessly. I looked at his table and there lay one needle stuck into a giant mound of musty colored Vaseline and one clamp. He came in with a Sharpie, stuck a dot on my nose and asked if I liked it. And I asked him if he could move it up. It was like on the bottom of my nostril and he said no, that it would look best where it was. So I was 16 and a pushover and said, okay, was your mom still with you? Your mom should have thrown down. My mum would have like never let me get a piercing ever after seeing this scenario. This is what parents think when kids tell them they want piercings. This is what they imagine the place is going to be like. Where was mum? Did she leave you? Now he's marking up my lip for my librette. And let me tell you, when I say this man marked my lip then scrubbed it back off with alcohol at least 30 times, I'm not kidding. The center of my lip had cracked and started bleeding and burning. He had rubbed it so much. He started saying stuff like, well, the way your lip is, don't hold your lip like that. You keep holding your face wrong. I can't get it scented. You know, just making sure I knew it was my fault. He wasn't able to get it even. It's another thing inexperienced people do or people who have no idea what they're doing. Blame it on the a a a a a alcohol. Blame it on you. So finally he makes what he thinks is perfect placement. I look at it and first of all, it wasn't even scented and he done it. It was way to the left and it was crooked to the left. I told him I at least wanted to shift it to the right so it would be in the middle. But he deadass looked at me in the eyes and said, that is the middle. If it ain't, then I'm not doing it because it's gonna be crooked and you not gonna like it. My mom chimed in and said it looked even to her. Mom! So I sucked it up and thought it was crazy. Dude buddy asked me what kind of jewelry I want. I say like dainty jewelry and he brings back a 14 gauge librette bar with balls on it. Clearly the size of my pinky nail. I was shook and asked if he had smaller balls at least. And he said word for word, you got a fat lip. You ain't gonna be able to see it if you go smaller. Maybe if it was your top lip, I could do smaller, but your bottom lip just fat. What the hell? I was just kind of like, what? And my mum laughed, so I just sat there relishing in how much I wish I hadn't have gotten myself there. Then he took his Vaseline needle, which I never saw in a package or saw him throw away, by the way. Oh no. This is yucky. I'm so sorry this happened. Grabbed a clamp and stabbed my nose fast as but then he leaves the needle in my nose for like 10 minutes while he goes to get a stud. He finally comes back with a regular smegular Elban nostril stud and fumbles putting it in for at least another two minutes. Nose blood everywhere. Finally, we get that mess cleaned up and he goes in for my lip. Same needle. Oh my God. He had to clamp, unclamp, and reclamp onto my lip at least 10 times, saying it was moving too much and pulling my lip in and not relaxing. I was literally just sitting there until he got it right. Finally, he gets it clamped, shoved the needle through my lip with two audible pops, then almost pulled the needle trying to get the clamp off onto the jewelry. Got the jewelry in, but then dropped the ball onto the floor four times before finally getting it onto my lip and bloody clearly didn't get a new ball either. I had my piercings, it was approaching six in the morning and I was ready to go home. Surprisingly, the swelling and big jewelry made the librette look pretty even. But once it healed after being infected for a month, I changed it to something I actually liked. This was when I figured how truly f***ed up the placement was. I took it out almost exactly a year after I got it. The first nostril piercing was infected for easily six months. It was ridiculous and insane and I've gotten acceptance since then at a decent shop and really realized how bad the place I went to the first time was. Moral of the story, you were so right. If it seems shady, it is. Both you and your mum must be traumatized after that event because that would have been horrific. And that genuinely sounds like the worst place I've ever heard. Like there's definitely dodgy places that like get by being not as dodgy, but that is dodgy. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like down below and let me know which like story you thought was the most bloody intense and stressful because I am so stressed after all of those. If you are new here, please subscribe to my channel. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like down below and I'll be back very soon. Bye.